Hey there, Painful Mass here. Um, today I'd like to talk about a common argument that's made, um, and it has to do with morality. Um, and I'd like to talk about it from the point of view of an atheist criticizing how atheists present the argument. So it's about jail statistics. Um, so the, the way this usually goes is um, in order to refute the claim that uh, Christianity or any religion um, causes people to do good, um, you just look at jail statistics and you find that the um, exact, basically the exact percentage of the jail population matches the percentage of people in society, um, showing that there's that people who belong to that religion um, don't actually do better percentage-wise um, of, of not committing crimes and being caught for crimes, actually. Um, and I think this is fine, right? Because if there's causation, then we will see correlation. And we don't see correlation, so there is not causation. But atheists tend to take this one step too far when they present this argument. Then they normally point out that atheists actually have a much, much, much lower percentage in jails than in society. And although they never usually explicitly claim that this shows that athe atheism causes people to behave better, um, that's sort of the implicit assumption when this claim is then made. Um, and that's a problem. And that's, that's mostly a problem because, um, you know, correlation doesn't cause causation. And like I said, a lot of people don't make this, this fallacy, but um, I do find that it is assumed. And so if you could come up with causation, which I think a lot of people probably could come up with good ideas for causation of this. Um, but what I want to bring up is an interesting counter to this. And it's based off of Greta Christina's um, talk at, I think it was the, the Secular Student Alliance um, conference. Um, and it was called um, What the Atheist Movement Can Learn from the LGBT Movement. And she brought up this really fascinating point that um, what's going to happen in the atheist movement is what happened in the LGBT movement. And that's um, early on, people who identified themselves as LGBT, um, if you don't know what that means, that means uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, um, people identi who identified themselves as that had sort of a special status. Um, it took a, a great deal of character uh, to, and thought to, to sort of understand your sexuality and be comfortable with it. And, and people, people had sort of a special status. But as time went on, this, this special status went away um, as the, the movement progressed and it became uh, less taboo. Um, now, now kids come out really, really early in, in middle school or maybe even earlier, and they don't have to go through this long, thoughtful process that, that sort of alters your character. And what she claims is this exact thing is happening in the atheist movement right now. Right now, atheists have a, a fairly special status because in order to – most atheists start as, as in some sort of religion – and they have to overcome that to become an atheist. They have to put a lot of time and effort and thought into, into what they believe and why they believe it. And, and what this ultimately does is it, it means the type of person that comes out of religion has put a lot of time into thinking about morality and ethics and why they should be an ethical person and, and how they can justify this. And, and so this is... This is actually one really good reason why it's possible that, that atheist statistics are, are what they are in jails. And as the atheist movement goes on, um, 
then we we should actually expect to see um, see that that number reflect the number of atheists in society more and more because um, exactly this reason um, as as atheist parents start to have children or it becomes um, it, it's not as Oh, how do I want to say this? As I mean, as atheist parents start to have children, and there's another generation of the of the atheists, then they're gonna grow up being atheists and not have to go through this this very thoughtful, hard process of overcoming what they're told in religion. And so it, it'll be become more of a stabilized uh, random distribution of people rather than just this one special class of people so I mean this probably sounded uh, I don't know really pompous or something um, that's not at all what I mean what I mean is that there's uh, there's good reason to believe that uh, looking at the history of other movements that this number will go up and that there isn't actually causation involved. It's just that at this point in history, um, the atheist movement is, is young enough that um, it, it looks like there's, there's causation. Uh, so that's all I have today. I, I just wanted to point out this fallacy and, and why, I mean, correlation does not imply causation, especially if we have good reason to believe so.